Can you tell us the origin story of the Dogon people, their knowledge about Sirius B, and why Europeans try to disclaim their understanding of Sirius B? Great question. From what I know and remember about the Dogon people uh, who live, um, you know, on the Mandingara Cliffs, uh, what is not Mali, West Africa, um, these are people who actually were not born there because people are not born on the cliffs or plateaus, um, but they migrated there in an unknown time. And I'll probably refer your viewers to a number of books that, that lay out Dogon cosmology because, you know, our time is, is limited in this. And it'll be great just to have a conversation, right, after, you know, having this common reference. And so um, there's a book called Conversations with Ogatameli, who was an elder, Dogon elder, and these two French uh, anthropologists that had interviewed, I think, 1950s, maybe a little earlier, but 1950s or so. Um, and then uh, there's another book, a larger book, the name will come back to me in a moment. That it's in my mind, but it's not too clear right now, uh, about the Dogon people um, that, that is really just, just um, oh, it's called The Pale Fox, The Pale Fox, right? And um, the cosmology is laid out there. And so the Dogon's uh, cosmology has a lot of similarities with the cosmology from ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt, right? Where, you know, there is this sort of um, cosmic force, unnamed, ungendered, unknown, um, you know, th that is like the, the sort of dark matter, right? And out of that emerges, right? Um, the, 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 you know, the, 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 these forces, right? And that's really all the world is, whether it's the universe or cosmos, it's energy and matter, right? Energy makes matter, and matter is filled with energy. Basically, matter is a densification of energy. Everything is energy and force, right? Um, what's true in physics and chemistry is, is true for these African peoples way, way long ago in ancient times. And so out of the dark matter emerging these spiritual forces, um, and there's a spiritual force referred to as Ama that is, that is you know, crucial to you know, these other forces that are centers of Ama, um, and so you have, um, you know, um, a story, you know, of um, essentially the one of those forces going awry, right? Think of it like cancer. And all cancer is, and I don't want to, you know, be too crude, but all cancer is, is, is certain cells going rogue. And then, of course, fighting the body, right? Fighting the body, fighting itself. And so, and so there is a force of forces, and hence the notion of the pale fox, um, that uh, essentially goes rogue, right? It essentially wants to be, um, um, you know, um, like, you know, this, this, the creative force, right? That's, that's sort of the architect. And this becomes the inspiration for Marima Ani's classic book, Yurugu, right? The notion of Yurugu, the sort of rogue, right? That wants to essentially compete with and be like this, this you know, um, creative force of the, of the universe. You have it in Kenshin Kemet, right? And so they, that, 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 that awesome and archaic, that, that awesome and um, archetypical battle between uh, Osar uh, and Set, right? That, that, again, these two forces, one, 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 one wants to take the place, you know, of, of this grander, more, more pivotal creative force. And so you have this sort of cosmic battle that goes on. Now, there's much more to it. That's why I refer to your readers to these two books, The Pale Fox and, um, and um, Conversation with Ogatameli, uh, because they'll lay out more details in which I you know, can do with you in this time. Uh, but the Dogon people, you know, in that cosmology, therefore, they have a sensibility about the cosmos, right? Because what happens is when you live on, the, on these high mountains and plateaus, like the Bandegara Cliffs, you have a certain perspective, literally and, met and, and metaphorically. And so it is by the elders having spiritual eyesight, meaning they see not better or worse, but differently, right? Layered with empirical observation. In other words, um, being on that elevated plateau, you have what, say, let's say a telescope has it, because the telescopes are usually placed on elevated platforms, right? And so you have that by the cliffs, naturally, right, organically. And then it is what? Long empirical observation on clear nights, right, which are then ritualized, right, meaning periodically ritualized, that one can be able to see. So you can see in two ways, training your eyes, right, to be able to what? Sharply see what others can't see because of your elevated platform and from what? 
hundreds of years of doing this, right? And accumulated knowledge over time, right? So this is really a character study, really. And then spiritually, right? Being able to what? In, in the dark nights, without any artificial light, you know, that in the streets or otherwise, impairing, because lights, you know, artificial light impairs your vision, whereas clear nights, whether it's Jamaica or in Mali, right? You see in, in, a, in, a, in a way that you can't see elsewhere. No cloud, no fog, just, just really just black. Cosmos as the backdrop to what? These stars. And then you're able to what, see the formation. And what happened is empirically, you develop what patterns, and the Dogon did. You see what star comes in formation, how often, and these observations are married to the agrarian cycle, right? When these grains and crops are available, and you then you ritualize them by having festivals, right? And so there are festivals around the viewing that mark the appearances of these stars. So these festivals essentially are, are, are celebratory markings of these observations that are cosmological, but that are real, that then become essentially uh, ritualized, right, ritualized forms. And so in many ways, this is why African culture is not African culture, meaning it is a culture without a name. Because cosmology, ritual, agrarian life, are just tightly bound together. They're tightly woven or braided together in a way that you can't name it one thing. And that's tough for people to conceptualize who are outside of the culture, outside of the language of those people that we call culture. So culture and spirituality are really just these poor substitutes of placeholders, something that can't be named and shouldn't be named, right? To be lived. And so, you know, Dogon's spiritual culture as, as, as a temporary placeholder was such that you allow me these observations. So these observations, because they 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 are uncomprehendable um, to a land and people out, outside of both. When we come to this debate that was sparked by um, Carl Sagan, who was an astronomer, well known. I think he taught at Cornell University, where I went to grad school. Um, you know, he argued um, that it's impossible for these Africans to have known about Sirius B or any other star or constellation because they, they don't have the brain power or the technology B. Um, and certainly, if they did, you know, they must have learned it from the Europeans who visited them. Right? Classic hymetic myth and hypothesis, right? These people are empty headed, you know, they have no way of knowing. Which, which, if you read Carl Sagan, you know, what he's really saying is this, and I'm going to translate him, you know, for your audience, <laughs> is that we couldn't have known what you've known without our gadgets much later than you did. <laughs> That's what he's really saying, right? <laughs> right? We don't know how you know what you know because we came to this observation in the 20th century, right? When you had known this centuries and millennia ago, and because you knew it before us, we can't give you any credit because we took so long to figure out with our gadgets and our technology and our know-how so late in the game. And we want to remain or maintain this, this hocus pocus that we're better than you, that we're superior to you, right? We have to what gets you out of your righteous mind by devaluing the meaning and, and, and even arguing to say that, mm -mm, there's no way. But of course, the Dogon people on the cliffs, in their righteous mind, in their cultural base, on their spiritual culture and platform, then it's not a debate. To them, you know, is that even worth debating or arguing about? It's lived. And so their ritual and festival continues. In fact, on YouTube, you can find some of these dances because they're mass that occasion these festivals and dances but it only occurs certain times, and it's part of a in more, much more larger cosmology, which may include, because it's part of the larger Mande people, right? Um, may include the Akan people in that cosmology. It's another conversation that we can have some other time. Um, but it's a very wide and broad cosmology that stretches um, a quarter wider West Africa, right? Uh, it includes so many um, people that fall under the Mande or Mande kind um, umbrella.